Alrighty guys, welcome back. So a little different video today. I'm going to talk a little bit about 3D printing. So I've been into 3D printing quite a bit lately. As some of you remember a while back, longer than I'd like to admit, a subscriber sent me a 3D printer. The Kevman 11 sent me a 3D printer and I wasn't using it at the time. My father-in-law was actively 3D printing at the time so I let him borrow it and he made some stuff for the kids with it and then it just kind of sat there for a while. So the kids and I have been thinking about getting back into the 3D printing. We know we had it, so we went over there for Christmas and then picked it up and brought it home with us. My son has been really into robotics lately and stuff through school, so he wants to be able to build things with the 3D printer to use to build robots and Legos and all kinds of stuff. So fast forward a few weeks, I've been 3D printing like a madman. I almost need a second printer just to keep up with the demand for the kids. So our journey started off like I'm sure most people's do by leveling the bed, printing a bunch of random gadgets from Thingiverse.com, leveling the bed, articulated animals, leveling the bed again so we could level the bed again. And by the time we got to the Slothopus, I really started to think to myself, this is cool, but I'd like to find something practical that I can do with this or be able to create things that are actually useful instead of just messing around. So I started looking for different puzzles and game ideas. My daughter likes chess, so we decided to print a chess game for her. So that's what this is here, all the chess pieces. All the board pieces are individual squares and they link together like puzzles. Uh, and then we have some of the black pieces here. My son found some Lego pieces that he wanted. He wanted this backhoe bucket, so we printed that. And he also wanted these Lego tank track gears. But these are the gears that we printed um, off Thingiverse. These are half gears and they're actually supposed to be glued together like this. And then the issue that we had with these was that the holes were too small. So we ended up having to file the holes out and make them a little bit bigger. So as we were going through all this stuff, the next part couldn't have come at a better time. Dale Follett from Twisted Builds made a post on his Facebook about moving from Fusion 360 to a program called FreeCAD. So I've heard of Fusion 360 before and I kind of just parked it in the back of my mind that I would use it someday or I know that it exists if I ever wanted to get into modeling parts. But I knew getting into that would kind of be a rabbit hole and I just wasn't really ready to go down that path yet. So not wanting to limit myself to just printing bendy slugs and lizards, uh, I decided to actually spend some time and mess around with FreeCAD and see if I could make some parts. So I don't really know the whole history of FreeCAD, but it sounds like it had some limitations before where people would gravitate towards Fusion 360 and other programs. But it sounds like FreeCAD's coming a long way and they made some decent upgrades lately that it's causing people to switch. Like Dale decided he's going to move from Fusion 360 and start using FreeCAD more. So I figured that was good enough for me and I'd try it out. So I spent some time trying to figure it out on my own and just see what I could do and basically got nowhere. So decided that I would just watch a couple tutorial videos and like I got partway through the first video that I was watching and then just decided to follow the video step by step and actually make the part that the guy was making on the video. So it was a nine minute video and I remember it taking me about an hour to make the part following the video. But after that hour, uh, I was able to make the part and kind of got a good understanding or a basic understanding of how some of the stuff works. So after that, I basically did the same thing over and over again. I just kept binge watching videos. The guy had a whole series on there of different videos and making different parts. So I followed along and made some of the parts. Uh, and then after I understood it a little bit, decided to start making some of my own parts. So the first thing that I actually modeled on my own, I guess, is this phone stand. And I just was thinking about what, what I could do. This was sitting on the desk next to me. The, I'll put a picture up. There was a black one uh, that I copied. And I just used a digital caliper and measured, did all the measurements and put it in there. Saved it, exported it as an STL, and then printed the file. So... That was a pretty cool big first step for me to be able to actually draw something out, put it on the printer, and then print it and hold it in my hand the same night was really cool. So I know this isn't like anything new or groundbreaking, right? It's 3D printing, it's been around for a long time, but it's very new to me, especially with the CAD stuff and being able to design parts. So my mind was blown seeing that and I'm kind of excited for you know where I could go with this or even using it for building parts for the channel or potentially even building parts that I could send out to have made out of metal or stuff like that too. I think it opens a lot of doors. So now I'm thinking, you know, what else can I try to make? And then my son told me about this piece that he wanted. It was a Lego piece, but it was actually two separate pieces that he wanted combined. There's a gray piece and a red piece. And he wanted the female end of the gray piece, but then the red axle piece to be sticking out the other end of it. So I sat down and spent some time and actually made that thing and printed it out. And it worked. 
So I spent some time messing with that separate file. I have like seven different versions now, but just like making pieces longer or making it stronger, uh, making things a little thicker so they wouldn't break. But after like the seventh version, I have this part now that he is able to use. When I made that piece, that piece was designed to fit around an axle. So remember when I said that I had to file down all of the axle centers for these pieces for the tank gear? Uh, now I realize that I had a proper measurement for the axle after we got that dialed in so that I could make a new gear. I just didn't have the gear dimension. So then I sat down and used the same specs that I had for the axle for the center and then I ended up making this guy right here. So I just took the caliper again and then took all the measurements off of these. These are the ones I found off Thingiverse that are separated. They have to be glued. So I wanted to make a one-piece gear that had the proper size center that I was able to use. And here's actually another one that I printed today, a black one. So the axle fits in there nice and uh, actually looks pretty good. It's one piece, so I did have to print it with supports on the backside. So the backside doesn't look as nice as the front, but he's going to put that to the inside of the tank anyways. So now we have uh, a good working part. These here, I can't even, can't even get them in there at all. So, and the best part about it, when he fitted this one, he said it actually fits better than the one that works on there because I made the holes a little bit deeper so the track actually fits a little bit more snugly into the gear. And he said it was actually better than the ones that we printed from Thingiverse because these would slip and the, the track wouldn't mesh properly all the time. Um, so he's happy about that and I'm actually printing uh, nine more of these right now because he's going to put ten of them on his tank that he's building. So, and then as I was printing out all these chess pieces, we don't have a box or anything for the chess pieces. So, we have all the chess pieces, all the squares. There's going to be 64 squares, 32 of each color. I still have to print the black ones yet. Uh, but I decided to make a box, which is this piece here. So, this is one that I modeled completely from scratch on FreeCAD. And it's a 200 by 200 millimeter square because that's limited by the printer bed size. Uh, and then I just made pockets for each piece. Each piece is protruding 30 millimeters from the top of the pocket, so it's pretty level here. So I just measured how long the piece was, take 30 millimeters off of it, and that's how deep I made the pockets. Um, and then pockets are all good size. I did mess up a little bit on this one because I, I took the measurement off of one piece, and then I assumed that the base measurement was the same for all of these. So then these holes and these holes were too small, so what I did when I printed these black pieces I ended up just changing the XY dimension on the bottom to 95% and then kept the Z measurement the same. So they're the same height but the base is a little bit smaller and then they fit in there. And then I modified the external part of the box to have the cor correct dimensions for the new pieces. So this is going to be an insert. This is going to go inside of a lower portion of the box. The outer lower portion of the box has 35 millimeter standoffs inside of it that this is going to rest on top of. So it'll be five millimeters above the top of the pieces on the inside of the box and then this will sit down inside there and then I have to make a lid for it. So that was a pretty big step I think too, being able to design this from scratch, from being able to design this from scratch uh, after having no knowledge of FreeCAD at all and then print it. This took 31 hours to print. It was a very long print. Um, 31 hours. The lower part of the box is estimated it's going to take over two days to print it. So. I'll probably start working on that one tomorrow. I'm going to start with a fresh roll because it's going to use like half of the roll of filament. But it'll be pretty cool to have a, a box. So that's pretty much all I got for this one. So thanks to the Kev man for sending me the 3D printer a long time ago. And I'm finally getting around to using it and it's awesome. And thanks to Dale for the Facebook post. It really, like I said, came at a perfect time because we were actively messing around with this stuff. And it was on my mind of like how do I make up my own parts and he made that post and that he was going to start using it, so I decided to check it out. So you can download FreeCAD from FreeCAD.com. It's free. That's awesome. Fits in my budget. And yeah, go check out TwistedBuilds.com too. He's got some cool stuff on there. He's building like a CAN bus logger thing, and he's got a boost controller, and he does a lot of like the smart computer CAN bus wizardry stuff, so go check that out. He's pretty active on the Sloppy Mechanics Facebook page too. But yeah, hopefully you liked the video. I'm looking forward to seeing how I can actually... Uh, use this in future videos or future projects.